The Mutual Broadcasting System presents the Family Theater, starring Loretta Young and Donna Michi, with Jimmy Stewart as your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Good evening. This is Jimmy Stewart. Tonight, the Family Theater stars Loretta Young and Don Amici. You know, since this is our first program, maybe we ought to have a dedication. So right now, let's dedicate the Family Theater to your family with the hope that families everywhere will always be together and that your home will be a happy one with the conviction that prayer, simple prayer, will help to keep it that way. Now, uh, maybe you're thinking this is sort of an odd way to start a series of radio programs, the programs from Hollywood with movie stars, actors, and musicians, and maybe you're wondering what it's all about. Well, why don't you just sit back and listen? Listen to the music of Meredith Wilson's orchestra and, and listen to our story. It's called Flight from Home, a story written by True Boardman and starring Don Amici and Loretta Young. Oh, yes, Nora. We're just leaving. We'll be there in less than half an hour to take you to the train. All right, I'm all ready. Still packing? Uh, no, no, as a matter of fact, I'm writing a letter. Oh? Uh, but I'll be ready when you get here. All right. Uh, goodbye, Nora. Dear Jim, I don't pretend even to myself that this letter can make any difference. What we said last night before you left was final and definite. I know that. Within an hour, Nora and Charlie are coming to drive me to the train that will take me home to Cleveland. Home. It's funny that after six years, I should suddenly be thinking again of Cleveland as home. But what was, does one do while one waits those last minutes before she says goodbye to a lifetime? I don't know. I only know I feel impelled to put it down in black and white. Perhaps then, the separate pieces will make some pattern that has sense and order. Perhaps seeing it like that will help me, and you, if you ever read this letter, to somehow understand it all. As I say, I don't know, but I have to try. I'm sitting now by the front window that faces over the river. The day is perfect, and you can see all the way to the hills across the valley. And as I look out now, one object holds my eyes and my thoughts. It's something you built for me, Jim, with your own hands and showed me so proudly the day we arrived here from our honeymoon. The day that was really the beginning. Okay, Mrs. Matthews, your mansion awaits. All out? Oh, Jim, th th this is the Star Island place. Oh, you don't tell me. Oh, but Jim, we agreed on that little house near the university, the place on Elm Street. That shack for the wife of a man who in two years will be head of the university research lab? Oh. Couldn't think of it. Oh. Come on. <laughs> but, darling, we, we agreed. We talked it all over and decided, And remember? I decided you should have a place worthy of you. Uh, Mary, wait. Before we go inside, there's something here in the garden you didn't see before. What is it? Come on. In here. Well? Oh, Jim. Oh, darling, it's... it's... You see, the house was already built and furnished, and I wanted the place to have something I'd made myself. Oh, just for you. Oh, darling. And what better for a girl I couldn't even get to see for the first three months I knew her unless I went to church four times a week. <laughs> you? I went to church to see you. <laughs> what do you mean? Your mother told me you practically lived down at that church before you ever saw Jim Matthews. Oh, Jim, if I didn't already love you more than any man deserves, this shrine you built for me would... 
Oh, Jim, I'm so happy I'm scared. Hey, hey, now, take it easy. <laughs> you know where I got the idea for the shrine? Uh-uh. That trip I took around the world. On an island in the Indies I visited. Each family has its own shrine outside the house. They do? Uh-huh. Guarantees every newly married couple fair weather, good crops, and at least 14 children. 14? <laughs> well, 13. Oh, all right. <laughs> Come on, let's go inside the house. Darling, huh? before we go in, could we... Could we dedicate our shrine? Oh, it has been. The moment it was finished. By a fellow I know. Oh. And what did this fellow say? Oh, he said something like, Thanks, Lord, for what I know is going to be a fine marriage. Thanks for Mary understanding about my work and taking the job at the lab here because it means more freedom and authority, even though I could earn more money for somewhere else. Thanks for this house. And above all, may it be blessed with children and may every one of them look like their mother. Oh. That was all. You have anything to add? Yes, just one thing. What? Thanks, dear Lord, for Jim. And help me to be the wife that he deserves. And if it be your will, let there be children, all just like their father. Amen. All right, darling. Let's go inside. That was the beginning, Jim. Such a rich and warm and happiness-filled beginning that I forgot all about your overruling our agreement as to the house we'd buy. There was fun for us in those first months that so quickly became years. Such fun that, well, I wonder now how and when we first began to lose it. I only know that suddenly we were aware that there were two shadows across our life together. We had no child. And it began to seem we weren't ever going to have one. That was one shadow. And the other... Well, you felt you'd receive no recognition at the lab for all the work that you'd done. And then, just before our fourth anniversary, there was a night when it all seemed perfect again. We were alone, and and you were helping me in the kitchen. Gosh, two people can dirty an awful lot of dishes. (laughs) You don't have to help me with them, Jim. You're tired. Who's tired? I only played seven sets. Oh, excuse me. I forgot I was married to the original Iron Man. (laughs) What do you think of the new man? Hmm? The fellow I played singles with. Oh, Mr. Michaels? Hmm. Why, he's all right. Oh. He's the old man's new pet. Former student of his. So? So some people think the old man might decide to make him director of the research lab when Professor Kenny retires this fall. Oh, Jim, he couldn't. You've worked hard for that directorship. You deserve it. Don't worry. The old man knows that. In fact, you said something about it this afternoon. Oh. Looks good. Jim. Hmm? Jim, what would you do if Michaels did get that appointment over your uh, head? Nothing. Just blow the roof off the lab and the old man, that's all. Yeah, and I'd help you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, Jim, by the way, I, I went to see Dr. Peters this morning. Why? Oh, nothing important. Just to make sure whether or not we were going to have a baby. We are. Hand me the platter there. Uh, where's this young Michaels from, Jim? Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. How soon? Uh, December, maybe maybe January. You know, he's quite handsome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doc say you're all right? Perfect. Swell. You know, it's funny. People make such a to-do over this baby business. In the movies, the girl always has moonlight, soft music when she tells her husband he's supposed to faint or something. (laughs) No, no, that's when he's born. Here, here's the platter and be careful. But take us. We're washing dishes. Matter of fact, hmm. just conversation. Nobody excited, nobody nervous, nobody... Look out! Look. Oh! oh! Oh, Mary. Mary, darling. Jim, I'm so happy. Jim, this time it's really true. Oh, thank heaven, it's really true. Those months that followed, Jim, for those months I will always be grateful. Our life had purpose again, and it was beautiful and complete. And you were as proud as if you'd personally invented the idea of parenthood. And then that night, that one horrible, unforgettable night. Oh, my darling, if only that storm could have happened a week before or later or any time, but when it did... But it didn't, Jim, it happened then perhaps the most crucial moment of our lives. Yes, Dr. Peters, of course you're right. She shouldn't drive in this storm. 
Oh, I'm... Yeah, I'm positive she does. Yes, right here. Here, Mary, he wants to talk to you. All right. He's definitely sending another doctor. Oh, oh yes, all right. H Hello, doctor. Yeah, fine time I pick. Helpful Mary, that's me. Oh, yes, yes, of course I understand. You're right. Yes, of course it's safer in this storm. Oh, certainly, as long as you recommend him. But just so he makes it in time. Oh, no. No, I haven't been able to find Jim anywhere. And, Doctor, I'm worried about him. He should have been home two hours ago. Now, Doctor, look, you know I'm not alone. I called Nora and she came right over. Now, now don't you worry about me. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> and don't forget, I bet you it's a girl. Now, you say it's a boy. It's still a boy, huh? <laughs> Nora, Dr. Peters... Oh, Nora! Hold on, honey, hold on. That one was 18 minutes. Nora, the front door. Jim, is that you? Oh, Jim, I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Mary. Hi, Nora. Oh, darling, where have you been? I... Jim. Been? I've been celebrating. All by myself, all afternoon. I got some news for you. Michael's got that assignment as director of the lab. Oh. Pretty boy Michael's is now my new boss. Ray! Oh, Jim. Jim, I, Mary's I... needed you. The baby. What about him? You mean... Yes, Jim, yes. But I'm all right now that you're here. We call Dr. Peters, and, and he can't leave the hospital, so he's sending a doctor here. But he doesn't want me driving in to the hospital in this storm. Well, that's ridiculous. I... Of course you're going to the hospital. There's time, isn't there? Oh, I suppose so, but Dr. Peters Jim, said... that's crazy. The doctor specifically and said... And I say she... she's going to the hospital. We'll have no home delivery with some doctor we don't know. You're having the best, Mary. You hear me? Jim Matthews' wife is having the best there is. No storm or anything else is going to prevent it either. Jim. Jim, please slow down. I I'm sure we'll get there in time. And I'm all right, dear. But please, take it easy. I know what I'm doing. <gasps> Jim, are you sure I shouldn't drive? I can, you know. Don't be ridiculous. I'm terribly sorry about the appointment, dear. You, you should have had it. Jim, please slow down. Oh, be quiet, Mary. I had a few drinks, sure. What of it? Stop sounding as, as though I'm... Jim, look gonna... out! Jim! Doctor, Mary will be all right, Jim, but the child, I... I'm sorry, there was nothing I could do. I see. You should never have tried to drive in through that storm. You suppose I don't know that now? Doctor, what about... What about other children for us later? There are many children already born who need adoption, son. I'm sorry. You, uh, You'd better go into Mary. Mary? Jim. Mary. Jim. Jim, we lost her. Jim, our baby's dead. <laughs> Dr. Peters couldn't save him. <laughs> you must know this. Except, except for the accident, you both would have been all right. Oh. Except for the accident. Oh, Jim. Jim, listen to me. I'll let you I... rest now. I'll leave you alone. Oh, no, Jim, don't do that. Jim, wait a minute. Listen, listen, listen. But you didn't wait and you didn't listen. Then or in the many times in the weeks and months to come when I tried to talk to you about that night. I told you I forgave you, but you just smiled at me as though you heard, but you didn't believe me. So our marriage went on. But actually, it wasn't any marriage at all. We were two people who lived in a single house a thousand miles apart. We both changed, Jim. I'm afraid I grew a little bitter in my unhappiness, and you... Well, other people, too, began to worry about you. There was the day Professor Ahrens came to see me from the university. The old man, as you always called him. And I assure you, Mrs. Matthews, I, I try never to interfere with the private lives of my staff members. But I'm worried about Jim. He goes on working, yes, but... With uh, such an attitude, he was the best project man I had. That's why I kept him free 
unhampered by staff responsibilities. But lately, well, I, I've tried to talk to him, and his only response is he'll resign if I'm not satisfied. I, now, I don't want that, Mrs. Matthews. I want Jim. But I want the old Jim, not a man who brings his mind to the laboratory and whose heart is left somewhere else. <laughs> We talked, Jim, when we saw each other, but we might as well have used different languages. And then I thought perhaps I'd found an answer. That afternoon, three months ago, I persuaded you to go with Nora and Charlie to the children's foundling home on the pretense that they were thinking of adopting a child. And when we came home that night, you were more yourself than I'd seen you in months. There was one child in particular had impressed you. Mary, did you notice that girl a little older than the others? Kid with uh, the turn-up nose and long yellow hair? Why... Yes, wasn't her name uh, Joan? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Any uh, chance of Nora and Charlie taking her? Uh, did you like her? Me? Uh-huh. Well, sure. How can you not like a kid in a spot like that? Well, I mean, did you like Joan particularly? Did you, Jim? So that's it. Yes, that's it. Nora and Charlie had no intention of adopting a kid. No, Jim, no, they didn't. But I... I thought about it and prayed about it for an awfully long time, and I, I honestly think that a child is the answer, Jim. Maybe our life is, is, well, as it is, because it's too shallow. Yeah, I thought of that, too. Oh, darling. Darling, do let us investigate. Let us talk to them at the home. Let's start to think about it seriously, huh? What's there to think about? If you want it that way, go ahead. Oh, Jim! And the first thing we'll do is cut that kid's hair. Oh, oh, darling! <laughs> Three months. Three months leading up to yesterday. Three months of interviews with the adoption board and visits to the home, and fixing the den over for, for room for Joan. Three months of planning. Three wonderful months of living again. And then yesterday. Yesterday, the finale to it all. Little Joan, happy and eager and frightened all at the same time in her new home. And it's not that I'm exactly afraid just never slept in a room by myself. Anyway, not since I remember. Well, I understand, Joan. And until you get used to it, I'll come in here each night and lie down with you until you're asleep. How's that? You can tell me stories, huh? That'll be fine, <laughs> Mother. Should I call you Mother or Mary? Oh, whichever you wish. It'll just work out, you'll see. And what about... Jim? Oh, we'll talk to him about that, shall we? Where is he? You said we should expect him at three o'clock. It's almost five. Well, maybe his train's late. You know, he's been on a trip. Are you sure he'll be glad to see me? Oh, Joan. Jim and I talked you over for a long time. He'll be glad. Why did he take me instead of one of the teensy kids? Most folks who came to the home took the little babies. I'd about given up hope on a kind of I'm so old. <laughs> Why, honey. Oh, honey, age has nothing to do with it. You were the little girl our home needed to make it complete. I'm sure glad. Mary. There he is. I'm in here, Jim, in the den. Mary, I, I wanted to... Hello, Mr. Matthews. I'm here. Mary, didn't you get my wire? Your wire? Oh, no, dear. The phone's been out. And you know how they are about deliveries now. Mary, I've got to talk to you. Jim, I... Uh, Mother, do you want me to go outside for a little while? Uh, yes, honey, do you mind? We, we'll, be, we'll be out in a few minutes. All right. I'll stay where you can call me. All right, dear. What did the telegram say, Jim? Oh, you must have gotten it. And you went ahead anyway. No, no, I didn't. I went ahead. Oh, so you've changed your mind. No. I made it up. I had time to think during this trip. And I decided once and for all. I'm late now because I stopped at the lab. I've resigned. I'm leaving here, Mary. Here. It's a deed to the house and a power of attorney if you want to sell it before the final arrangements are worked out. I left most of the money in the joint account. Here's the book. You... you seem to have thought of everything. I'm sorry about little Joan. But perhaps you'll keep her yourself. Why, you know that isn't possible. They wouldn't let me. This adoption idea was crazy for us and you know it. More is wrong with our marriage and not having a child in the house. What's wrong is wrong with me. Well, Jim, if you know that... Why don't you do something about it? Your trouble is, Mary, that you're still in love with a dream. 
And it was a dream. I'm what I am now. So let me go. All right, Jim, all right, all right. Go on, run. Go on and keep on running for the rest of your life from me and from your job and from yourself. Oh, Jim. Jim, if, if I could only make you see things the way... You think I don't? You want the whole truth, Mary? We've never faced that, have we? But we will now. Two years ago, I killed our baby. Jim, that's not... I killed our baby and, and made it certain that we'd never have another one. Oh. Try living with that in the back of your mind, Mary. Take it to work with you day after day. See it there in the eyes of your wife every time you look at her. That isn't true, Try Jim. lying in bed night after night, reliving that crash a thousand times. You there in the street and in the rain. Not even crying in your pain. Just saying over and over to me, it's all right, Jim. I'll be all right. And the baby will live. The baby didn't live. Oh, Jim. Jim, Jim, why can't it be simple? Why can't I just put my arms around you and say I love you, dear, and I'll always love you, and that'll be all the answer? But it isn't. Our only chance is for me to try to make you see it all as I do, Jim. No, Mary, I'm going... Now, Jim, listen to me. Listen, please. Jim, what happened that night two years ago was an accident. A single accident for which no one is responsible. It won't do, Mary. We were on that road for one reason. The selfish pride of the man you call your husband. Pride that wouldn't let him have his child born here at home when he could be important by rushing you to the hospital. The same pride that even at the start of our marriage made me buy a bigger and better house than the one we'd agreed on together. The same pride that, that couldn't take the blow of Michael's being named director and sent me to a bar to get drunk when you needed me more than ever before in our life together. Jim, if these things are true, or, or if you feel they are, what answer is it now to run away? Why don't you face them, Jim, and accept them? Face them in honesty and humility and stop running away, darling. Oh, Jim... Jim, remember that poem you used to read to me? You, you said it was your favorite, The Hound of Heaven, remember? Remember it, Jim? I fled him down the nights and down the days. Remember? Jim! I fled him down the nights and down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I fled him down the labyrinth and ways of my own mind. And in a mist of tears, I hid from him. Why, you're that man, Jim. You're fleeing from your own faith. You're fleeing from your own forgiveness, Jim. Some things are beyond forgiveness. What things? Did our Lord ever say that? Oh, my darling, you know better if you'll just admit it to yourself. Oh, can't you see there is forgiveness if you'll just break through this wall you built and accept it, Jim? All right, darling. Go on now, if you must. But go on out and find yourself. Go out and walk and pray. Pray with all your heart, Jim. But darling, if you can do that, I know you'll get back to me and to our life together. It's no use, Mary. <gasps> I tell you, it's no use. I... Jim! Jim! Oh, dear God, help him. Help him. And help me to live without him. If that's the way it's got to be. And so it ended, Jim. You turned and walked out into the night and it was over. And there it is, the whole story. I said that putting in a letter might help me to understand, but it doesn't. I only know that I still love you as I shall never love another human being. And that when you went out of that door, a part of myself went with you. What's left, I don't care very much about. There's a car in the driveway, Jim, and that means that Nora and Charlie are here for me. So I must finish this quickly, Jim, and I... Oh, is that you, Nora? I'll be with you in a minute. I... I'm just finishing my letter. Nora? Hello, Mother. What... Joan, Joan, honey. Joan, how did you get here? I didn't run away and come back here, if that's what you mean. Somebody brought me. Somebody Who? He says he wants to talk to you. Please, outside. He says you know where. Yes, of course. Of course I do. Jim. I got his 
pause the train last night. But I kept hearing those words. I started walking. I must have walked all night. But you were right. I fled him down the nights and down the days. And all of a sudden, there was no place I could go. Once the walls I built were oh, down... darling, welcome home. I am home, Mary. Oh. Really home. I know. I know, Jim. And, Jim, I'm going to help you all I can. And I'll need your help. Oh. I asked for my job back this morning as Michael's assistant. Oh. Oh, I know you won't be sorry. Jim, I know you won't. I see a lot of things I wouldn't face before. The work I can do is a lot more important than whatever title they want to give me. Our child is dead. I can't change that. But there are lots of kids, like Joan, who could use the love we have to give. Oh, darling, you do see. Mother. Oh, oh yes, Joan. Come on in, honey. Oh, can I? I mean, may I? Of course you may. This is our family shrine, Joan. And after all, you're part of the family now. A very important part. Thank you, Loretta Young and Don Amici. You know, I thought maybe you folks would like to know why we call this program Family Theater. Well, I'll tell you. Because it's the most important thing in the world. Our most precious possession is our family. We all want our family to be happy, sure, but, well, sometimes going gets pretty tough. Sickness, bills, accidents, which make it almost too much for a man and his wife to handle. Did you, you ever feel that way? You know, you don't know where to turn for help. And because you're upset and worried, you get irritable and wango. The whole family seems to sort of fall apart, and you're positive there's nothing you can do to prevent it. But, but just stop and think a minute. Maybe you're, maybe you're overlooking something. Maybe there's a way you can get help, the most powerful help a man could ask for. But you've got to ask for it. And how do you ask for it? Well, you just pray. Yes, you, you ask Almighty God for his help. He wants you to pray. But you and your family will never know how much God can help you unless you ask. Deep down in your heart, you know he'll help you. Uh, before saying goodnight, I'm sure that Loretta Young and Don Amici join me in expressing our pleasure in having had a part in dedicating this first program of the Family Theater. Thanks to everyone who helped make the Family Theater possible. And uh, you might be interested to know that Richard Sandville directed our play and Drew Boardman wrote it. Now, next week, our stars in the family theater will be Walter Brennan, Beulah Bondi, and an original story, No Night Too Dark, by Charles Taswell. All right, that's Jimmy Stewart saying good night. Good night, everybody. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>